All right, I think I've been hinting at it for a while, but here is the actual pathway for beta oxidation, okay? So I want to take you guys through the intermediates and the different um, uh, molecules that are oxidized and reduced uh, along with the proper enzymes. And you might be thinking, again, another long pathway to remember. And yeah, it's, it's a fairly long pathway, so and it's a little bit detailed. So anyway, the first reaction here, we start with this acetyl-CoA, okay? And, you know, this is some long carbon chain on the end here, okay? We'll, we'll say maybe it's a 16 carbon fatty acid, okay? So here's a 16 carbon fatty acid. And the first step that's going to happen here is, is, is this right here is going to be oxidized, okay? And not only is this going to be oxidized, but FAD is going to be reduced to FADH2. Now, you know FADH2 is one of the common electron carriers, and it's going to be able to donate electrons to the electron transport chain and eventually create some energy through ATP. Okay, and that's where these fatty, this fatty acid breakdown gets some of its energy. Some of its energy is in the form of these reduced electron acceptors. Okay, so first of all, we have this CO-CoA, 16 carbon, whatever, um, doesn't really matter in this case, but it's it's saturated, okay? It's not unsaturated or anything like that. So saturated fatty acid. And the enzyme that's going to carry out this reaction is acetyl-CoA dehydrogenase, okay? So acetyl-CoA dehydrogenase is going to catalyze the reaction. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to form this double bond here, okay? And it's gonna form this double bond between carbons two and three, okay? And that molecule is known as trans-delta-2 enol coa okay so trans delta 2 enol coa now a couple of things i want to point out about this particular reaction and what's going on here um, the first thing i want to say is that um, there's a couple different forms of this acetyl coa dehydrogenase okay there's actually three different forms of it and what, what's going on here is that it depends on the length of the fatty acid chain. Okay, so if you have 16 to 20 carbons, there's one form, or 16 to 26 carbons, rather, there's one form. And then there's a medium chain length of 16 to 8, you know, carbons, and then very short chain fatty acids, okay? So there's different forms of this depending on how many fatty acids you have, and I mean how many um, carbons you have in your fatty acid chain. So that's the first thing I want to point out. And the second thing I want to point out is that all of this stuff that's going on in this whole beta oxidation process is all going to occur between carbons two and three. And I normally label those as alpha and beta. Okay, so it's all gonna occur between this alpha carbon and this beta carbon here, okay? And this is just like labeling in organic chemistry. You know, this is not the alpha carbon, okay? But the, the one adjacent to it is, and that's the alpha carbon, that's the beta carbon, et cetera, et cetera. So between this alpha and beta carbons, where all of this action is going to happen in this beta oxidation pathway. So the next step in the pathway is actually a hydration. Okay, so water is going to be added across the double bond. This is another classic um, reaction in organic chemistry that you see. So water gets added across this double bond. It becomes a hydration reaction. And you form a stereocenter here with, you know, an alcohol group now or a hydroxyl group, if you'd rather. Um, with a hydroxyl group on the third carbon and two hydrogens on the um, on the second carbon, or the alpha carbon, rather. I said I was going to call them alpha and beta, so I should stick to that. So the alpha carbon get, gets another hydrogen, and over here we add um, we add this hydroxyl group. So that's adding water across the double bond. Look, H plus H is H2, and O is H2O. So that's where that's where that comes from. All right. So the next reaction that's going to happen is we're going to take that same molecule, which the name is over here. It's not all that important, but it's L3-hydroxyacetyl-CoA. So L3-hydroxyacetyl-CoA. So here we are again with L3-hydroxyacetyl-CoA. And we're going to reduce another molecule here. This time it will be NAD+. Plus. NAD+, plus is reduced to NADH plus H+. Plus. And that's going to form this molecule over here, 3 keto acetyl coa Okay, and that's because we're going to have a ketone here now. This is a ketone group. Okay, so now we form a ketone group between this on this third carbon here. So between carbons two and three, again, is where all the action's going on. And we form this three keto acetyl coa Now, the final reaction in this process is catalyzed by an enzyme called thiolase. Okay, and what's going to happen is we have this three keto acetyl coa and it's going to be broken down into acetyl-CoA, which enters the citric acid cycle. So I'll just say, 
you know, citric acid cycle because that's what we know we want to add acetyl -CoA, acetyl CoA groups to the citric acid cycle because it produces lots of energy and that's why fats produce a lot of energy you know people say that there's more energy and I've said previously in videos that there's more energy in per gram in fat than there is in, in glycogen and that's true so here we go acetyl CoA we get acetyl CoA which is two carbon unit okay two carbons one two and then we have this you know acyl CoA, okay, this fatty acid chain, reduced by two carbons. Okay, so that's all that happens. So look, we have two carbons shorter here. All right, this is this is a, re, a re, you know we we've lost two carbons off the fatty acid chain. We formed one acetyl CoA molecule. All right, with that final reaction. So at the bottom here, I just wanted to kind of sum up what you get. So one round of, because they usually want you to do this in classes, or at least understand this or think about it. So one round of beta oxidation will produce one acetyl-CoA molecule, one NADH molecule, and one FADH2 electron acceptor. Okay? And remember, acetyl-CoA, when it goes into and enters the citric acid cycle, or Krebs cycle, or tricarboxylic tri acid cycle, or whatever you want to call it, it's going to produce three NADHs, one FADH2, and one ATP. And remember I said, you know, this the NADHs are like two ATP. Each one accounts for about two ATPs, each one, uh, or three ATPs, rather. Um, and each one of the FADH2s count for about two ATPs. Okay, so that's kind of a rough estimate. You can figure it out. But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, we're going to get a whole lot of energy from a 16-carbon fatty acid chain. Okay, so if we break down a 16-carbon fatty acid, we're going to get 120 ATP molecules. Okay? So, through, you know, through the entire process, from the production of acetyl-CoA and the production of reduced electron acceptors, um, during, during the beta-oxidation process, we're going to get a lot of friggin' energy.